Hi, I'm Tony. I'm Randall. I'm Kenny. We're the armed, or, or part of it. And uh, we're at Amoeba, and this is What's in My Bag. Okay, so up first, I have this really cool record um, by Tova Olsen called Cabin Fever, and I'm assuming it's really cool um, sonically. I, I haven't heard it. Tova Olsen is um, one half of Dead Machines, which is a, a noise group. With uh, John Olsen, who's in Wolf Eyes from Michigan. So these are kind of like uh, people who are close to our to our hearts, nearest and dearest. Uh, and the cool thing about like the, that noise scene is there's there's a a lot of releases. The collecting part of it is pretty fun because there's just an endless amount of stuff that was only released in you know the, you know 12 uh, lathe cut records or whatever. So uh, this one too, it's an American Tapes release, which is John's um, label, and this looks like. John Olson's collage work and his handwriting. So that's pretty cool. I have no idea what this sounds like, but I'm really, really excited to find out. American Tapes is uh, a really, really cool and important record label. Yeah, they're, they're, they're heavy hitters back home yeah. for us. <laughs> I'll start with uh, Water From Your Eyes. It's a newish band, I guess. They've put out a few records, I believe. I really like this record a ton. I've talked about it before, but I just like really enjoy it a lot. The single on it's like uh, Barley's really cool. The production sounds so good, but the whole album sounds like a little underbaked, which is something that I love. Like, sounds like it was made in a bedroom. From what I heard, they delivered this and didn't accept edits, which I thought was really cool. Mm. Um, the guitar work on it's really awesome. There's like stuff that's like super punk, and then there's stuff that could be on like an M. Du Mokhtar record, like like East African like wild vibe guitar stuff. So uh, yeah, and the the vocalist is incredible. So really like it. That's in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> My first pick is this uh, Trail of Dead, uh, Tower of the Dead record. I know everybody like really loves like source tags and codes, but I kind of think this one is like way better. But that's just me. It's just personal opinion. Um, I don't know, it just it's a rocking album. It's super progressive, like heavy, a lot of cool, you know, tones and uh, energy. I used to work at a cemetery. Tony used to work at a cemetery back in the day. And at the time this album came out, I listened to this straight for like an entire summer. And <laughs> it was an interesting like rocking out to this and like, you know, working at the, you know, weed whipping and at the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> like it just, it, yeah, it was just like, it was like maintenance job, but. Uh, best job yeah, ever. Best job ever. How so. did you two end up at the cemetery? My brother worked there, my family. dad worked the family, it's just a yeah. family spot. And it, it was just a really cool place where you could like be active outdoors. It ended at four o'clock every day. Yeah. Paid for college. Yeah. 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 That's so, awesome. You don't find many people who have had jobs in the cemetery. But you'll find a couple oh, yeah. of them in this one band. Yes. How about that? <laughs> uh, the Bad Plus, these are the Vistas. Our first album was called These Are Lights, and it was stolen uh, from These Are The Vistas. Bad Plus is a Canadian jazz band, a jazz trio. Actually, there's been some, some turnover in recent years with members, and they might 
It might be a quartet now. I'm not 100% sure. Mm. This band is really interesting because uh, they do a lot of covers. They have an album just of covers, and then they have uh, a lot of covers on a lot of their earlier albums. And if you told me like Canadian jazz trio, white Canadian jazz trio that covers Nirvana, I'd be like, no, thank you. But then when you hear it, I mean, they're incredible. And uh, the covers are totally worth their existence, which is rare for cover music. And yeah, this album has a Smells Like Teen Spirit cover on it. It also has a Flim cover, the Aphex Twin song, and I, it's kind of my favorite version of that song, mm. which I think is one of the catchiest, best songs ever. And Dave King, who is a drummer, is one of my favorite drummers in the world. I've gotten the honor to see him play a few times, and um, some of the stuff he does, he just, I, I literally have a hard time quantifying it, like understanding what he's doing. Um, very, very cool album, cool band. My next one is Cradle of Filth. Uh, <laughs> I think they just put this out. Uh, it's a live record. And it looks like there's some new tracks on it too, like She Is A Fire, I'm not super familiar with that jam. Um, I love black metal intros live, like song intros live, and Danny Filth is like the master, in my opinion. He's, he's it's over. You we're can a stop. mall black metal Yes, yeah, band. yeah. <laughs> like when I was a kid, people were like, yeah. you need to be into mayhem and like burs them. And I'm like, why? They're like, cause they like murder people and burn shit down. I was like, I, oh, I like sucks. how these guys like <laughs> play the music and have fun. Um, also, going to a Cradle of Phil show is like going to like a Las Vegas show. Yeah. Which is like, it's just the coolest thing. Cedar and Point Halloween weekend. Dude, weekends. it's like the <laughs> coolest. It's so much fun to go to a Cradle of Phil show. I'm kind of like super excited to listen to all the intros. What happens in the intro live? He just has this voice that he uses. It's so the guttural. Voice. And then he does his like squealy high thing after he does the intro. <laughs> It's like a very black metal thing that I think kind of like came into like death metal and stuff. Just like introducing your your whole thing in a way you can barely understand them. They just sound like, a, <laughs> like a little ha Halloween uh, thing you'd step on at Home Depot. So it's very, very cool. Uh, my next one is Weather Report, Mr. Gone. This band is just like an incredible influence on my musical like just appreciation and sort of being in awe of like technical like facility obviously like as a bass player like Jaco Pastores is like huge for me um I'm definitely like more familiar with like heavy weather but this album has like some crazy cuts like punk jazz and river people <laughs> the pressing has like this cool crosshatch texture on it, which is really, I've never seen before, but it's just really drawn to like how it like felt. <laughs> and textural. Uh, textural and yeah, really cool. Super stoked to have this. The Nerve Agents, Days of the White Owl. This is a Revelation Records record that is probably the first contemporary punk record that I got into. I was like, I think about 14 when this came out. And um, I have older brothers and, uh, you know, I had gotten into, uh, the, you know, the obvious stuff like the Dead Kennedys or Bad Brains and then like a lot of uh, hardcore, but stuff that kind of was in the late 80s, early 90s. And then this was the first thing that came out, uh, came out in like 2000. And this was the first record that like, wasn't uh, a throwback to me. It didn't come out when I was seven or two or one or, or, you know, wasn't even born yet. So this was really, really cool. And yeah, the song Pray in particular with that rail thin bass tone at the beginning of it yeah. now, but just, uh, <laughs> it sounds so disconcerting and so weird. This, uh, this album and this band are uh, really neat and important to my childhood.
the next thing in my bag was uh, Yes, Close to the Edge. This is a like super nostalgic record. This like was my go to sleep record for like um, a few years, you know. It's, it's hard to fall asleep to that one. Yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> this is like of all the like if you fell asleep to Relayer, you would just like lose your mind every night or something, or like fragile, <laughs> you couldn't handle your life. This has like it's big and like it does have like soothing string stuff, you know, the Wakeman esque uh, shit. Um, it has one of my favorite guitar solos on it. Um, you and I, like the breakdown in that, like I guess you'd call it. There's like 80 breakdowns in this, <laughs> on these records, but uh, it's just like the best thing ever and it just makes me so happy to uh, listen to. Uh, my next one is a Gentle Giant interview. Probably like the biggest influence on me as a bass player, Ray Shulman. He's like my favorite, um, one of my favorite musicians, period. But he's just such an incredible uh, instrumentalist. I'm always like learning their music um, and like playing along to it. And it's just been like a constant part of me ever since I first heard him. Like when my dad showed him, showed him to me one day, just put a CD in the car and I was just like, what is this? What's no use had no reason. It's like progressive rock, but it like mixes like jazz, folk, uh, blues, and then like classical. Uh, it's just, it, it's so over the top like technical facility all around and yeah i just this band is i think is so good <laughs> i want other people to be into them so bad because they're just it's just it's crazy it's such a uh it's like a world of music to like listen and get into and hear and always like very challenging at first and then like just more to discover as you keep going so um yeah gentle giant super super stoked <laughs> White Out by Greg Rucka. It's a graphic novel. It's from, I think this came out on Oni Press in like the late 90s. When you're like, you know, 12 and 13, you wanna, you're into comic books and you probably came up on like superhero stuff. And then uh, th there was a lot of cool indie stuff coming out at the time. And all those indie creators like Greg Rucka, Brian Michael Bendis, those guys eventually kind of just became the establishment, you know, now uh, at like Marvel and stuff, which is really, really interesting. But this was this really, really cool, like black and white, beautiful Steve Lieber artwork, line work, crime uh, book. And it is just really, really cool, really awesome. Uh, it was cool when I was 12, it's still cool to me now. <laughs> and I uh, am excited to read it again, yeah. My next one is Chet Baker Sings. I found this awesome picture disc of it. You make me smile with my heart. Uh, this is the first record I believe he sang on, so it's very well named. <laughs> Chet Baker sings. Uh, he's my, <laughs> he has my favorite voice. Uh, if I could sit, sound like any singer, it would be Chet Baker. He's the most handsome dude ever, too, which like adds to like he's just like the full package. Uh, tra uh, tragic life. Um, so this looks like the reissue because I believe they added songs, uh, the remaster or whatnot. But this has you know there's Gershwin stuff like lots of standards. Uh, my Funny Valentine is like his signature song, so his rendition of that is like incredible. This is like my cozy Sunday record. Uh, I put this on with my wife and my kid and we have a nice little Sunday. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really rad. And the picture disc is a huge plus, so I'm still. He's handsome. You want him everywhere. He's very handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fall in love too easily. I fall in love too fast. My next album is uh, Moody Man, Mahogany Brown. Moody Man's a Detroit techno legend. This album just reminds, sounds like spring to me because like Techno Fest is like every year, it's a huge thing in the city. And you know, there's obviously just a 
legendary artist that came from Detroit and the techno scene it's it, where it started. Some I think there's like debate on that, but this album, Mahogany Brown, a couple of those other ones, it just it reminds me of that time. It just is very fitting and it, it's like dancey and uh, just makes you want to go roller skating. Kind of like, <laughs> you know, that's that's what it's up. So Zulu, A New Tomorrow. This is a new, young, hardcore band from Los Angeles. They're just really good. I've gotten to see them a couple times in like the last year, I think. Yeah, this band's really cool. A lot of energy live, really, really good songs. Really, really cool sequencing on this record. Uh, beautiful artwork. It's a really, really cool band in general. So Zulu, uh, a new tomorrow. Really excited about them. Um, I don't think I have to like talk about this band because we're in Los Angeles. The X. Uh, this was <laughs> like uh, their first record in like a really long time. The reason I grabbed it, uh, Wayne White did the cover, and I love Wayne White. Like, humor and art is super fucking important, and he embraces it, and uh, his work with Pee Wee and Smashing Pumpkins and all that stuff is really great. And all I, his letter work, I mean, those are, he has yeah, a whole series of that like stuff, all it's his, really cool. Like, I love that he like started, the, the, something I really like, and it's like a very punk rock thing to me, is he started painting all the landscapes and then doing all this, and then just like went into resale shops like, why the fuck am I painting all this? So we would just grab them and then put that on there. He just, like economy and stuff is very cool too. Like just making the thing happen and having your vision come out is very important. So yeah, I just love him. I have uh, a print of his uh, at my house. He printed on blotter acid, a blotter acid sheet, which is really cool. So uh, my wife bought that for me. So yeah, I just thought this was really rad. The last one is this uh, Steely Dan Alive in America uh, live CD. I don't Uh, this is like the first Steely Dan album I ever heard um, when I was growing up. My dad had a copy of it and uh, I just, I was immediately drawn to it. I didn't know who Steely Dan was at the time, but I, I still have that CD. It's another thing I just still have and I won't ever get rid of it. But I think it's good to have a duplicate because it's like worn out. And the song Book of Liars, like a Walter Becker song, I think is in particular like uh, a highlight on this because everything else is like a hit. But uh, yeah, it's just a super deep cut, and this album rules. Silver Star in the Book of Liars by a name. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah cool. thank, thank you. you. Thank so you so much, much for coming thank in you. today. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.